Hello, welcome to A Little Less Than Random with me, Jason, and Andrew, of course. Say hi, Andrew. Hey, Jason. Sorry, I was away from my microphone. Of course, yeah. We were all away sometime this past weekend when the news broke about, uh, you know, the late and great Kobe Bryant. Yeah, which is Kobe Bean Bryant, focus. yeah. Yeah. So it's been a couple days. Yeah, a couple days, yeah. Who, who would have thought that, you know, at a sudden... You know, this was so sudden. Yeah, I was a little shocked when I first saw the message uh, on Facebook. Something that I've always kind of disliked is how these days, it's not like you get texts, it's not like you see it on the news. You see, like, these posts on Facebook. I- I've never really been fond of how people um, and before sh- we, share. Before we get to that, I think I know what you're trying to say, and we're going to get to that. How did you find out? Through a customer Kobe? at work. Oh, okay. I, just re- I, I found out through Facebook. But I thought, he, I thought he was just, like, joking around. Yeah, I didn't think it was real. Then Until I heard another customer over here overheard saying something saying oh that's a damn shame to mention something about a helicopter I'm like well okay that confirms it well i think especially because it came from tmz first of course tmz so somehow I didn't they're always it. ahead of everyone else yeah i didn't believe it i think it's you know there's something has to be said about too the scrupulous scrup i can't say the word scrupulousness of uh a news outlet to make sure that they get uh facts correct before they 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 share them yeah, so, especially like minutes after that it's happened. Yeah. And so like I was watching a YouTube video where Rick Fox was talking about the effect it had on his uh, family because for um, a while there were a lot of people sharing um, speculation that Rick Fox was on the helicopter Yeah, my well. cousin said that like, yeah. like but, how could Rick Fox be in it? Like, I don't know, he's probably doing his own thing. I don't know. But um, no, I mean, yeah, it's crazy. It's just at first you're confused though who... Okay, who was there besides Kobe? And right. it turns out, unfortunately, one, among one of them, it's been confirmed that uh, it was his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna. Yeah, which is horrible. Horrible, yeah. She was well, She wanted to be just like her father. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what do you want to... So, like, okay, like, I want to speculate as to how this could have happened. I think that's why it's so shocking, because you imagine that... I mean, we're always told air travel is more safe than, uh, than you know, just car, mm-hmm. car travel. And you imagine somebody who's a multimillionaire would have the safest, best protocols being practiced every time they fly. And so it, I think it comes as a big shock because he was so young and his daughter 41. being so young, you know, 13, um, they had their whole lives ahead of them, really. Yeah, well, through the 20-year run he had with the Lakers. Yeah, you know he's done a, a, like a remarkable, like an unsurmountable amount of, you know, you know accomplishments. You know he's done, he's done most people wouldn't do. You know, like he's risen through the ranks, and he's proven himself time and time again. You know that he is, you know, a contender. He can play ball. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think nobody doubts his his talent. Yeah, yeah. You know he's he's the goat. Sometimes I wonder if he even could have been better. If he, you know, had he taken more efficient shots, I'm confident his shooting percentages and his numbers would be higher. You would know more than I do, Andrew. You're the more the basketball yeah, enthusiast. Yeah, so I was a huge fanatic. I loved basketball. And uh, Kobe, I had, you know, a very complex view of Kobe. And we'll get there and we'll talk about some of the controversy because I think some of that sure. came to light. Um, but... I remember watching some videos of Kobe. I never got to see him live, um, even though I live in California. Um, You're saying you never saw a live game of the Lakers oh, yeah. featuring Kobe? Yeah, exactly. Really? I thought it was so. I remember I'd watched games during the special, during like the, the finals and stuff, where I remember Kobe, you know. This I, mean, was I what? mean, in person, not on TV. Oh, you're saying you've never seen him in person? In person, yeah. I don't think most oh, no, of us I, have actually, ever seen him. In actually, I have seen him in person. I saw him. Um, at Disneyland once. Um, are you sure it wasn't a are you sure it wasn't a guy that looked like Kobe? No, no, it was just Kobe. We uh, saw his his uh, his bodyguards too, and uh, ironically enough, he was drinking a Sprite and uh, he had a churro. He, he was buying a churro and got a churro. I think they were like probably like that was this was back when they were only like three or four dollars. No, oh, Disneyland. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but he's a millionaire, so he oh, could, yeah, he, he, he could have bought he could have bought as many as he wanted. I, I had forgotten about that till just now, um, but I never saw him play in person. Oh yeah, 
Well, I'm pretty sure it would have been a lot more magnificent just seeing him like there. Right. I mean, you would have to been like what? Jack Nicholson or Leonardo DiCaprio, one of the celebrity fans who comes out to watch those Laker games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, he, you know, I watched some of his older games and you see him just dominating like half of the Spurs team. You just see them unable to stop him. Had he taken even more efficient shots, had he kind of hunted, like, you know, the way Steve Nash played, where he hunted very specifically for high efficient shots? Uh, I just noticed Steve Nash is a little white dude. Canadian. By, well, by, by little, Canadian, there you, go. you say little, he's 6'4". Okay. Just to put know. that in context. Well, then again, I was watching it through a TV screen. Yeah. Well, 6'4 was shoot, so maybe he's really like 6'2". Well, but um, he's 6'2", 6'4". So I don't know why I, I imagine. Don't know, I don't know how tall you are. 5'11". 5'11". So he's taller than you, so we mm-hmm. say little. He's a big guy. Well, then again, I've only like I've only seen him. But anyway, yeah, I guess. Yeah, on the, I television, on the, on the television screen, they look small compared to Kobe, who was 6'7", right? Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I think he could have been even better. But what's remarkable about Kobe, and I really want to get this out there and say this because I think a lot of people forget it, they compare him to Jordan, right? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They, you know, he, he's, they compare him to the next, you know, he, that he might be the next or probably is, you know, the next Michael Jordan. Yeah. And the same thing like with LeBron, you know, he could be the next Michael Jordan. Or, you know, well, like, you or can, that Kobe can... is LeBron before LeBron was LeBron. Well, a lot of people see very remarkable differences in LeBron's game style and gameplay than Kobe and and Jordan, but you would say that they're the most similar, Kobe versus Jordan, right? Yeah. And some people even would argue that while they'd pick Jordan overall, um, Kobe was the better shooter, just like that he, or better scorer overall. I wouldn't doubt that. Um, And... You know, what's remarkable and what people often forget is when you look at their athleticism, Kobe's athleticism was nothing compared to Jordan's. Um, And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that, uh, you know, he was born, uh, Jordan had, uh, was born with uh, just monstrous hands and could palm the ball, kind of like Kawhi Leonard does now. Or like just hold the ball with a grip of your hand. Yeah. (laughs) And it's it's more than just being able to hold it. He's, He's able to catch it, hold it and do it all without trying. You see, you have to have pretty big hands to be able to do this. Um, that easily but i can barely do it myself yeah and so this gave jordan a huge advantage um offensively and um it, you know we all remember those like jordan fakes where he you know pretend like he's passing the ball and then pull the ball back i think Kawhi kind of do it um, yeah so kobe didn't have that that was just a, an advantage that jordan had and the other thing is that jordan had about one foot of a, a larger of a, of a vertical jump and so kobe did all of this being um nearly as good and in the conversation of as being as good as jordan with less um natural uh, natural talent yeah and then don't let's not forget that kobe is uh he can handle himself under pressure i remember i don't know what game it was i'm trying to remember like my earliest memories uh it was like a few seconds before the clock just you know rang or whatever and uh, he made the last shot from like from a distance. Yeah, yeah. I think you're thinking it's probably you're thinking of a Portland game, one of his Portland Trailblazers games. Maybe I'm yeah, not sure. Him. I can't remember what team. I I, I think it was during mm-hmm. the finals because mm-hmm. that's the only time I would watch Lakers yeah. game. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so it must I think that's probably it. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about the the other thing? Spend a little bit and then we yeah, can uh, go on. To we could talk positive. about that because. Especially in this crazy clown world that we live in, <laughs> you know the Joker. Oh, that was yeah. our, that was our, was that our first podcast? I think that was our second or third. Yeah. I don't know. Right, but yeah, I mean, well, Kobe had a had a complicated career and life, and he started. You know, he was drafted into the NBA as a high schooler. Yeah. So uh, it, it, he had a complex career. Well, I really don't. I mean, I'm not really too affected by it. Well, let, let, I'm going to just start off by saying, you know, we have all we all have our own personal problems. We have our own demons, and uh, I mean, although he's a hero to the public, you know, to to the masses out there, everyone looks up to Kobe. You said that uh, minorities and a lot of Latinx, Latinx pe- and, people, yeah, and black people you know, of color, people yeah. of color, look up to Kobe. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure white people too, right? 
Oh, yeah, absolutely, too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Pe- a, a lot of people do. People um, in general. Yeah. But most especially towards minorities, you know, yeah. because, because uh, to Kobe, you know, uh, Kobe was a success story. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have done wrong in their lives and are looking for a little bit of redemption. Okay. And then just minutes after, you know, news, the word got out that Kobe had crashed and unfortunately passed away, you know, from the... From the incident, the accident, like somewhere out there, there's someone's like, okay, I'm gonna take this opportunity. It's very opportunistic of them to do that, yeah. And then just bring up sexual allegations. They're in before anyone has right. a chance to make any kind of, you know, share their condolences. Yeah. Can, can should I read what I wrote? Because I, I had go I ahead. Yeah. Read a I, I know you want to read this, and I was going to actually revise this, but I'll just read what I had. Um, So I said, Kobe Bean Bryant inspired many Latinx and people of color. Michelle Alexander writes of some pathways of redemption for men of color who have wronged others. And while Kobe might not be the most deserving, his fans may be. If you criticized him in 2003, great. 2004, yes. 2005, absolutely. 2006, now too. When he won awards, of course. When Larry Nance Jr. was shamed into walking back truthful statements, yes. He deserved criticism, and so does a larger culture that shames people away from talking about important issues. If you criticized him every day for the last 17 years, right on. But if you're posting for the first time about this in the last two or three days, maybe your racism is showing. And I, and I said your racism is showing. I, I don't know if it's necessarily racism or, op, or like you said, the people are just being opportunistic. That would be the best case scenario. Mm-hmm. So I wrote that. Um, because you're kicking uh, people of color when they're down. Yes, this needs to be discussed as it forever altered my perspective of him since I was in middle school. Uh, And Kobe, you know, but it just doesn't feel timely, right? Um, And I'm going away from what I wrote um, here a a bit. I would give people some time to grieve because obviously Kobe's passed away, so the chances of a reoffending are zero. Um, He was 24 when it happened. Um, the Colorado case uh, with the 19-year-old woman. 23, who worked there. Yeah. yeah. And so um, he hadn't reoffended for 17 years, uh, hopefully. And uh, and his wife, you know, whatever. And there is some ambiguity with that case. His wife forgave him. And so um, it just seems untimely. Originally, uh, from my heard, was a, a reporter from the Washington Post. Yeah. Yeah, she was suspended. Mm-hmm. And was well, supposedly, yeah. you know, everyone thought she wrote it, but it was someone else's way. But she was kind of like... I guess try to be edgy by, you yeah. know, by posting this out yeah. there. Well, that's the problem is that so there's so many people who try to take advantage of, of the getting the first post or getting the most controversial post is that well, our yeah. social media just uh, it just rewards people for being the worst kind of um, hu- human beings. Um, I have a general rule about a lot of this. When I see stuff like that, rather than fight, argue, comment. I just don't comment because that feeds the algorithm. So basically, um, if somebody says something that I think is just um, asinine, I actually just mute it. If you comment on it and give it a bunch of views and other people start ref- commenting back, it ranks higher in the algorithm. Yeah, yeah don't feed them with hate. Don't, don't give them yeah. any reason. Mm-hmm. So don't click. Don't click on it. And don't click on the YouTube videos. Don't click on their links. It's kind of hard not to because now you want to know... I mean, we all know why. Someone wants to slander his name. There's people out there who believe that he's actually yeah. a serial rapist. R- right, but there's, but a, there's a time, again, he, he obviously he's just passed away, uh, so he, the possibility of re- reoffending is zero. There is a larger culture that needs to be criticized, but the time to criticize that is uh, after the funeral. Yeah, they're doing it at a time where, like, okay, he's no longer here with us to defend mm-hmm. himself. Right. What better way than to, like... And I think it's probably more, after he's left. there are more pressing pressing issues if you care about um, uh, women's rights, like um, Donald Trump and what uh, the GOP has tried to do with uh, abortion rights. I think it's far more pressing. I would say focus on that if you really care about women's rights. Um, and then, you know, I have no problem with criticizing Kobe, but I, I would say give his family, especially having lost their 13 year old daughter. Yeah. Some yeah. Time like, to grieve. Do they not care that, you know, what's happened? It wasn't yeah. just him. It's not just those yeah, other people. Nine, but nine people mom, one of them yeah. was his daughter. Yeah. So, you know, I think he's learned from his past mistake. I mean, it's hard to say. And but I would apply the, the critical race theory that we've been applying 
um, and have received through Mich- people like Michelle Alexander, who say that even murderers, e- you know, we're applying a pathway to and redemption. Uh, who's even Michelle people- Alexander? Michelle Alexander wrote a seminal book called The New Jim Crow. Oh, uh, okay. And yeah. The New Jim, you probably heard of it. Mm-hmm. The New Jim Crow, uh, one of the central parts of her book is an argument that um, people shouldn't forever be marred by past mistakes, that there should be a pathway to redemption, that they should be able to serve their time and reintegrate into society. And I agree with that. Yeah. But uh, who? But and who people are is, applying this all the way up to murder, right? To the murder. Yeah. They yeah, away. definitely. I mean, he was human after all. He yeah. had his own fallacies, his own faults. I mean, he was a hero to all of us, but yeah, he had his own personal problems. Like, he, he, he's just as human as we are. I mean, yeah, Grant, he has athleticism. I mean, he's still human. Yeah, so what, so for those who probably don't know, growing up, they probably don't know. But like, so what happened to Kobe in the in in his you know during this whole allegation case? So it was proven that uh, he wrote an apology letter to the woman um, who uh, who her identity who, was never revealed. I think it was. It was a uh, um, someone who worked at a hotel. Yeah, uh, she was about nineteen years old, mm-hmm. and uh, they had DNA. They had the evidence, um, and so um, uh, for sure there was infidelity, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think the problem was at first he denied it, and then once the evidence um, uh, came out and people knew that the, that something had happened with absolute certainty, um, he then said, "Oh, okay, yes." Um, then he uh, uh, admitted it. He said that it was consensual to the sex. Fact that it was consensual, but right. that she didn't see it that way. Right, and so um, people will say, "Well, she um, she." So why didn't she testify? That's the question a lot mm-hmm. of people say. But his lawyers, when you have somebody who's a multimillionaire who has uh, an amazing team of lawyers, they just went after her to the point where she settled out of court. And so... Uh, That's why, the, from what I heard, there was two cases. A oh, criminal uh, case and a civil case. Yeah. So she didn't... She didn't uh, so she, uh, so didn't in the second test- case, the civil case, the, the civil they settled case, out of yeah. court. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw one comparison to Harvey Weinstein where... Obviously, Car- Harvey Weinstein was a, uh, absolutely a serial rapist, and there could be very little comparison to Kobe. And I think Kobe got in a lot of feuds with a lot of his uh, fellow players because this is stuff that was probably rampant in the league. But Kobe was, uh, was you know, was a superstar. I mean, yeah. I mean, I go as I said with anyone, yeah. whether they're an athlete. Yeah. And so, know, so it's rock some- star, yeah. So it's something actor. in broader culture that needs to be discussed, just not, not two days after he's passed. Of course, yeah. Of course, everyone wants to jump ship and just, instead of focusing on all the great accomplishments they did, they, people just want to focus on the one few bad things that he's done. And then there's one thing we didn't like, going back to his, you know, let's talk about his death. Like, okay, yeah, of course he didn't want to drive. I mean, what, when you have the luxury of of a helicopter because yeah. of your... And I don't know what the number is. It safer to fly through helicopter? I know that air travel is generally safer. Helicopters. Oh might yeah, be but a when it comes to weather, story. though, oh, you don't want to take chances. Mm-hmm. I was before I heard the news that day. That same day before the news broke out, I was driving from my girlfriend's apartment, and uh, yeah, it was pretty foggy. Mm-hmm. Considerably foggy, but but since you know, since I'm um, you know. Right there, where there's streets and objects in front of you, you just tend to drive slow and you see what's in front of you. Right. But when you're in the air, you got to worry what's in from like the farthest distance mm-hmm. and whether there's a, like a mountain beneath oh, you right. or you're right in the middle. Like, it's hard to see. Right. Well, every time we enter into a car, um, we're uh, so, sort of taking a, a risk, a calculated risk that a lot of times we don't think about, but I think inherently people know. I mean, yeah, especially when it was all sudden. Like, you would think that Kobe would, if if he was going to go out, you know, it was through old age. His daughter would have grown up to be a legend herself. Yeah. And then you see Shaq and and then Charles Barkley as commentators, you know. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course. Dave Robinson. Th- that's the thing about Kobe. He would, okay, so after his 20-year run with the Lakers, you know, after, well, he retired in, like, 2016. Yeah. He Wait, go- was, it, has it been that, was it 2016? Yeah. The 60-point game? I believe so. Yeah. So, um, but but that wasn't the end of it. Okay, so that was the end of his basketball career, but it was the beginning of something else as well. Yeah, he won a Grammy since then. I think it was an Oscar. Oscar, 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 sorry, not yeah. Grammy, Oscar. Yeah. So, I mean, well, they were paying tribute to him while the Grammys was happening at the Staples Center. Um, yeah, for the, what's it called, short animated film called Dear Basketball. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he, he was trying to accomplish more. I think he was like, you know, he's a great example of someone who's trying to like, 
reach out to the next generation. You know, especially basketball, you know, like. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure, yeah. 20 years. And then another 20 years and he's gone. It's amazing to think that he came back and played and, and had a 60-point game after an Achilles tear. It's, you just can't imagine Do you want that. to pull out the stats of his accomplishments? Or, or of his career? Of his career. Well, okay, from what I heard recently, uh, LeBron surpassed him in... Scoring? In scoring, like I, in third place of that. Mm-hmm. And that was just a recent yeah. thing well, that happened. the thing is that you're going to see the game has changed quite a bit. Uh-huh. And so you're going to see higher scoring now. His possessions aren't as long. Uh, so there's a faster pace. There's different... I think there's a new shot clock rule. Um, when you inbound the ball uh, at the end of some quarters. So um, don't, you know, the people in the comments will probably correct me. Uh, the game has changed quite a lot with the pacing and the style of, of, of shots that you can take. You take more more threes. I think I was looking at his stats and he started shooting close to seven threes towards the end of his career, a game where he was shooting like maybe one or two, one and a half a game at the beginning of his career. But he was a good shooter. If you look at his best years, he was like a 37, almost 40% shooter, shooting a lot of bad shots. So that's why I say if he if he had taken good shots um, in a modern in the modern NBA, I think he would have been an even better player. Than he was then? Yeah. But, you know, the style of play was changing as he was getting injured, as his injury sort of uh, took hold. Yeah, I mean, it takes its toll. And so toll. That, that took its toll. So, I, you know, I think when people compare the numbers, a lot of people compare the numbers, but you can't do that. You can't compare the numbers because the, the, the defense, the way that people play defense is different. You're comparing what are good per, shooting percentages of good shots from three um, to bad shots from three in a much tougher, slower-paced game where defense has had time, better time to catch up. Um, do you ever watch that parody, that guy who does the parodies of all the different players? How so? Like how they... How they, how they like, um, he did one of James Harden, and he has him, like, dancing and taking, like, 50 steps before he shoots his step back. They're making fun of, like, how they how perform. They play. Yeah, and what know, they do like... and, and their idiosyncrasies and where they bend the rules a little bit. Like, James Harden, uh, James Harden's step pack's technically legal, but I'm, I'm almost confident occasionally he does travel and it doesn't get called. Um, but, like... Uh, he did a parody of Kobe, and there were like four or five people constantly guarding Kobe, and you see him shooting and making the last shot. Or in other words, pass the ball to Kobe. Yeah, exactly. Well, he got known for being a, a bit of a ball hog, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, a couple of those years, though, his teams were really bad, so you you can kind of justify it. I mean, yeah, he was undeniable. I mean, I mean, but had he scored some of those shots without five people guarding him, I think his percentages would be even higher. That's that's what I was saying. His shooting percentage would be even higher. So I I wouldn't compare shooting percentages and say, oh, you know, so and so was a better player. Like I, I think it's hard to compare James. Let's say James Harden, who's kind of changed the rules a little bit to Kobe, or you know, or to compare him to modern shooting guards and point guards today. Yeah. Basketball. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, we, all, we there was another topic we wanted to talk about. I don't know if I'm going to cut this and split it into two podcasts. I think I'll just do one and maybe do a shorter version just about COVID. All right, let's... Um, but you want to talk about the virus. The yeah, corona, supposedly called there's the coronavirus. a coronavirus. Yeah. Uh, just when you think 2020 could have not started out any worse. I mean, everything was fine for the first three, four weeks, and then... Well, Kobe's death took us, t- took us from I don't know. Uh, yeah, by surprise. By surprise, yeah. So, um, Marino. Va- so we we live in Marino Valley, and so we found out that there's a plane that is carrying Americans from China to Alaska, and they I think they already stopped in Alaska, and then they're carrying them to, yeah. mm-hmm, to and, March, uh, March Air Force Base, which is yeah. They were Marino originally Valley, supposed Riverside. to go to Ontario, but. Instead of bringing the problem close to my girlfriend's place of living, <laughs> they brought it over here. Well, okay, I'm going to say something that people won't like, because I've seen a lot of my friends who also live in Marina Valley, Riverside area, complaining. <laughs> you have to have something wrong with your head to think it's better that they land in Ontario, even if you live in Riverside. Because Ontario is a, a 15 to 20 minute drive from Riverside and Marina Valley. So would you want... A potentially, uh, you know, if there's a virus and they're going to be quarantined, would you want them to be landing in a in a air at an airport, a public airport, 
or at an air reserve base. Where and they're, so, they're going to supply them with, uh, uh, yeah, with uh, portable showers and whatnot. And yeah, where they're water. where basically you can make sure that any if anybody is infected with the virus, better um, safe than sorry, fellas. Yeah, and so if you think that you would be safer um, with the plane landing in an airport in Ontario, that's twenty minutes away. Um, compared to uh, a, an air reserve base that's 10 minutes away, you, you've got something wrong with your cerebral cortex. Yeah. You, you need to get your brain scanned and checked. Mm, well, I, I think there's something wrong, but not in that regard. But more I like, know we don't like it here. That's uh, the thing. It's like that, there's a whole country, and it's like, oh, it comes to our, our, our okay, city. Okay, I'm, I'm like, I'm already, I'm, I'm already assuming the worst. I'm thinking it's the zombie apocalypse. No, it's not like, the zombie apocalypse. I'm thinking, like, okay, yeah, this why is people, like... Why do people do that? There's lots of things that could kill us. And I think only 4%, two, I've, I've seen things like 2 to 4% of people are dying from this virus. Um, which it sounds people, like people something die off from of the, Resident Evil. Like, but people die from the flu all the time. And, but this is not any flu, it's and the, the people coronavirus. Dying, and people dying from... You know what this reminds me of? The movie Outbreak. With that oh, fictional virus, Mutaba Mut- virus. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, with, who was in that movie? Dustin Hoffman? Yeah, he's a great actor. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, what I was saying is that, from what I've read... Uh, people, a small number of people are dying f- from the virus, and it's mostly people who already have pre-existing conditions that have weakened their immune system. Yeah. But I think the thing is that there's really no known treatment to it. Yeah, there is. It's called quarantine. Oh, yeah, I guess. I mean, that's to help stop the But they said they, they won't know if the symptoms will clear until after yeah. two weeks, yeah. 14 but, days. But remember how everybody was freaking out over Ebola? Ebola. Oh, okay, you might want to cut that out. No, I'll leave that in. Oh, and I did wanted to share that Kobe Bryant poem. Yeah, do you have it? Let's check out your poem, man. Yeah, so I've written a poem, and ironically, I've wrote this uh, a week before his passing. Okay. Well, you know, like I said, I find it ironic just because the reason why I wrote a I don't I I don't like mention too much of Kobe. More so the shoes that I wear, and you'll see right now as I read it. Because here, I'm just going to start off, and we'll just take it from there. Okay. Swoosh, that's the name of the poem. Striding in style, strutting with these slick kicks, so ever subtle and guile. Speed is king, they swoosh me in a mile. Sauntering so subtle, I feel like Kobe in the Nile. Always on the fly, aimless wonder like a lost child. Clip like the angel's wings, I cry, cry and cry. Loathe these loafers, gone bitter and bile. Cool. And then I was going to add something. I was thinking about revising that. Maybe say defiant, like the great Kobe Bryant. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Probably doesn't even have to rhyme everywhere. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing about poems. Like, yeah. it, it's been like stereotyped that, oh, a good poem must rhyme every time. Yeah. See what I did there? I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could be a rapper. Oh, uh, no. Trust me. Oh, yeah. We did an exercise yesterday at class. We were exam. We, our instructor, or professor, at it gave his handouts of lyrics of uh, rappers mm-hmm. of their songs. So we we got uh that you know that song Bust a Moo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were analyzing that. We find every other line had a word that rhymed. And but it, when, as soon as we got to Eminem's "Lose Yourself," that's when it was more than just rhyming. It was a, it was a. Assonance? Am I, how do you, am I saying that right? Oh, sorry, I was checking out your poem. Oh, uh, trust me. Um, it could be better for a poem. I, I honestly, I wrote that poem last minute. Okay. It's, cool, it's kind of got some cool things. So you're talking about your shoes, too. Speed is that, king. Yeah, that speed is king, yeah. Oh, then the I was talking about the experience Nike. of owning uh, Kobe Bryant shoes, mm-hmm. which is funny because I I didn't buy them. I, they were just hand-me-downs. Mm-hmm. Who knows? My shoes might be up in value, but I doubt it. Oh no! I think they did. Nike even pulled everything. So because yeah, that want, I, that you did share with they me. They didn't want people selling um, Kobe Bryant stuff at you know double, triple the cost by buying it all out, like buying all of it. Buy it right and now. reselling it. Yeah, um, and probably too, it's it's a wise thing from Nike because then they can profit off of it because they'll make something rare and then they can come out like with maybe more special limited edition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shoes memorizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which. Um, which is not maybe not necessarily bad because um, because some of that profits I'm sure goes to his family and, and that's the reason why I called the name this poem swoosh mm-hmm. because of Nike Nike yeah yeah and Nike's also named after uh, some Greek goddess in mythology or is mm-hmm. 
Nike. Oh, okay. That's I why I mentioned that. the clipped wing. And the, oh, does that have something to do with the Nile too? That no, that just use that just uh just to run with the word mile or whatever. Oh, okay. But I did mention Kobe's name. Okay. Kobe in the Nile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I feel like I'm very superstitious, Andrew, because I I I wrote this just talking about my Kobe shoes because mm-hmm. this is like the first time I ever owned a limited edition pair of shoes. Pair of shoes, right. you know, especially from Kobe Bryant. Right. And then these were given to me by my uncle, at, like I said, as a hand me down. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I was talking about like, oh, these shoes are comfortable. I have style. People compliment me all I the time. I did notice that we, last time we were at the mall uh, at the mills, uh, you got a lot of compliments on your shoes. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't even want to think about what's the next celebrity death of twenty twenty. I don't know. No. Yeah. But I can tell you the first meme of 2020, the the whole Dolly Parton challenge. Uh, I don't know this, no. Okay, you, you, I'm pretty sure you've seen this on Facebook. Four pictures of yourself, each one represented by social media. Oh, so you that have came your, from Dolly Parton? Yeah, it, so you have your LinkedIn version of yourself, uh, your see. Facebook version of yourself, Instagram version of right. yourself, and your, in, yeah. and your Tinder version. Yeah. What if you're, you're, you're just like using all the same photos for everything? Yeah, that or that, if, that won't say much about yourself. Other than or what if you're just using pictures of your cat, or four different pictures of the cat? Right. Um, I the think the irony is, I think my Instagram photo, uh, like my profile pic, is my cat, and I think that's the same picture we use on our on our. Yeah, videos. we need we need a we're we're in the process of creating our podcast logo. Yeah, Jason's working on that. With that said, um, well, till next time, 